Yes. Now, we're hearing his voice and obey. Now, let me hurry up and move on. We're we going to get out of here in just a minute. Let's jump down real quick to verse 8. Now, this is really where I wanted to go. But I had to go through the first part of this to let you know what happened. Before they ate of the tree, they was in fellowship with God. But listen to what happened when they was disobedient in verse 8. And this something. Let's read verse 7 and then go to 8. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they was naked. Isn't that something? All this time. They was not even conscious of their physical body. Because the Bible made it clear that after they ate up the knowledge of good and evil, it said their eyes was open. Their, amen. And they knew they became aware of their physical body. And then the scripture said they knew they was naked. Now, I don't know about y'all, if I come walking out my door without clothes on, I know I'm naked. Right. I can feel it. But these guys right here was walking in such fellowship with God till, till they was living out of their spirit till they was not even conscious of their physical body. And you'll find out <laughs> through the research of your Bible that a lot of things man became aware of after he fell. And just imagine this. This is just basic common sense. If you're not aware of your body, and your body is where your feelings, your desire, it, it actually, uh, one, 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 one of the, the Hebrew words for, for heart, when you talk about the heart, you, you, you're talking about the emotions of a man. You're talking about his innermost being. His emotions, his feelings, his desires. So Adam was not conscious. Now tell me, if I don't know I'm naked, how I know when I'm home? Man wasn't living under the power of preservation or trying to keep himself alive. The Spirit of God on the inside of him was keeping him alive. Adam was living out of his spirit. You know, consciousness. Consciousness means to be aware. To know what's going on. To be able to see it. But Adam was not conscious of his physical body. But after he ate of the tree, and when you study the Bible and study Bible history, they got different dispensations, okay? Because after Adam fell, Cain and Abel, the Bible said they, you know, after they sinned, how that Cain left, he went over into the land of naught. I don't want to get into all that. But that tells you that that was other people here. So they weren't the only two. But in the Bible, he called all men out. Everything that was created was called Adam. The, the, the woman actually wasn't called a woman until after the fall. Because when you read in Genesis, the Bible said he called their names Adam. So after the fall of man, then, then guess what? Amen. They, 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 amen. They, they start taking on labels and names and, and, and consciousness and awareness start coming in. And they knew that they was naked. They knew that they was hungry. They knew all this stuff. When the age of what they call the age of consciousness, the age of government, all this stuff. Amen. And guess what? Even the age of government, when, when, when Nero and them start building cities and, and things like that, that was after the, the fall of man. Man was very intelligent. Man didn't have to be taught in the institution because God placed everything on the inside of them. They was created like God with the knowledge of God, with the knowledge to create and, and to bring things into, ex, into existence. That's the way they was created. God put everything on the inside of them. 
education and school systems came after men had failed. And they had to be trained. But Adam didn't have to be trained. God placed everything in him that he needed. But here comes the serpent. Now his whole perception changes. Because when the perception comes in, I can say, ooh, I think I like him. I don't think I do. Because good and evil give you a choice. But when you're just created with love, and the perception of love, the perception of God, then there's no jealousy, there's no envy, because guess what? The Bible said that love is the fulfillment of the law, right? That's what the Bible said. All the commandments hang on this one commandment. Love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you want to walk in, 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 in what God called completion and wholeness and, and everything that God is, then you walk in love. That's the very nature. That's the very character of God. And that's what God is calling the church back to, is to walk in his nature, to walk like him, to act the way he acts, to love the way he loves us. The Bible said he so loved us that he, what? he gave his only begotten son. He loved us with the agape love of God. That means the Bible said, why? we was yet sinners, Christ yet yeah. died. And that's the way we're supposed to love one another. And the Bible said that love do what? It covers a multitude of sin. When you're walking in the agape love of God, then guess what, Jim? I can't hate you. I can't gossip. I won't steal your wife. I won't, amen, I, I, I won't steal from you. I won't covet. Amen. I won't commit adultery on my wife. I won't commit fornication because love won't permit you to do that. Right. Not the love of God. Remember, there's two type of love. There's the worldly love, and then there's the agape type of man. Yes. That's that love that's willing to sacrifice like Jesus did. He said, I don't care how you treat me. I'm still going to love you. That's right. Think about that. God loved us when we was messing up. But as soon as I make a mistake, y'all want to cut my head off. We're supposed to love each other with that same kind of love. Right. Instead of destroying each other, we're supposed to pick one another up. And do y'all know that's what the world waiting for? For the church to get in this position and get in this place of power and authority. So when they see what's happening in the church, they want to come into the house of God and receive what we are receiving. Why? Because when they see the love of God, they'll see the power of God. They'll see the blessings of God in the church. And the reason why the church is not prospering and people are not coming into the house of God because the world is not seeing the God kind of love they need to see. Man. Now, I'm not saying the church is bad. But I'm saying the church really need to be perfected. Yes. Because when I look at the church, not that I'm judging, but the word judges, right? Amen. Our standard is supposed to line up with the word of God. God ain't never asked you what you feel. God don't even care what you feel. He wants us to line up with the word of God. And the thing about it is this. Through the Holy Spirit, God will help us. Yes. You ain't out here by yourself. And I hear people say, but Pastor Barnes, I can't do it anymore. I ain't crazy. I know you can. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. That's right. The Bible said the Holy Ghost is what? He's a teacher. He's a guide. He'll, he'll teach us. He'll guide us. He'll lead us into all truth. So we need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit so he can lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen. Well, what is the Holy Spirit, Pastor Barnes? Now, I hear folks talking about the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit all the time. And I tell people this. Let's make it real simple. The Holy Spirit is that part of you that when you want to do wrong, it'll whisper in your heart and say, Victor, don't do that. We try to make the Holy Spirit something so dramatic and so so like it got these like like rain or lightning striking from heaven. No, if the Holy Spirit is in your heart and He'll speak to you, and He'll tell you what you do, what you need to do, and what you don't need to do. But we need to learn how to tap into that inner voice. See, church is not about coming in here shouting, dancing, and, 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 and kicking up folk that we had church because Pastor Barnes ain't hooping and hollering and, 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 and he's teaching and trying to tell you, amen, amen, trying to teach you truth, amen. We need to grow. We don't need emotionalism, amen. We come into church and shout and dance and never grow. And let me tell you something. Most people don't want to come to a word church because it cultivates and it digs into the heart. And it makes you see yourself. Yeah. Not to condemn you, but to show you that you need Jesus. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit to help you. Mm -hmm. 
Because I'm telling you, man, I've been there. I've been there. I've done it. I, 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 I struggle with the drinking. I struggle with the smoking. I struggle with running the streets. But when I got filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and then like the old Pentecostal folks said, with the gift of speaking in tongues, and then that anointing, that power changed my life. It took the hatred. It took the bitterness out of me, man. And it taught me how to love people. Amen. And it transformed and changed my life. And I know that if God can take all that mess out of me and clean my life up, he can take it out of you and clean your life up. Amen. God, amen. And, 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 and it's amazing. God bless me. I travel. I preach. I'm doing everything that God has called me to do in these last days. Not all of it, but I'm coming into it. But, but you know what? I had to give my life to Jesus. I I had to get filled with that power, that Holy Ghost, that transformed me, Pastor Larry, that changed my life. Amen. Amen. So we need this power. Yes, we do. You know? Let me hurry and get out of here. It's almost 20 after. We're going to get out of here. Y'all give me a minute. Okay? Listen to verse 8. Okay. And the eyes of verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they was naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Wow. So when they ate of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, they became aware of their physical body. Anybody ever thought about that? Don't that tell you something? Man, think about it. They was not even conscious of their body. Now, I've been in the world a long time. I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it because I don't care. I, I guess I can say it. I, I, I remember one time when I was in the world, I smoked a joint. Somebody said, preacher smoked a joint. Yeah, I did. I ain't got no sense to lie to you. But I smoked that joint, man, and I was floating out my body drink. <laughs> I saw stuff. I saw stuff walking around the room. And I said to myself, I said, God, I'll never smoke another joint in my life. And after I got through smoking that, I never did touch it again. But, but, but you know what? I was floating out my body. I kid you not, I was so high. Man, and I said, God, please deliver me. Get me from this. And what, what I'm saying, I was, I, it's, it's like I, I, I literally left my physical body. Like I was standing outside looking in. That sounds crazy, don't it? But, but imagine, I said that to say this, imagine Adam. Not being conscious. Because he was not living from his soul, but he was living from his spirit. Because think about this. There's not a person in here today can tell me that you can see a voice walking. Mm. Have you ever seen a voice fall? I've never seen a voice walk. But the Bible said the voice of God walked through the garden. Now that kind of tell me that that was kind of at a higher level of consciousness and spiritual level than we are to actually hear and see the voice of God walking in the garden. Literally, in the garden of God. And God's voice would come, he would, he would walk, his voice would walk through. Think about this. And that means that that voice was having a conversation with them. I don't think of a voice so much as an entity. Because when I speak to you, all you get is, getting, all you get is what I say. What I release. But the voice of God walked into God. And God communed with them. Mm -hmm. In the cool of the day. So Adam was at such a, a, a spiritual consciousness and level where he could hear the voice of God that he was sensitive to the spirit realm. So the first man, Adam, didn't live out of his soul. He lived out of his spirit. He wasn't a conscious being. He was aware of the spirit realm, but he was, he was not controlled by his desires. He was not controlled by his feelings. Number one, because good and evil had entered his consciousness. Just imagine, I'll just say for Jesus died over three, four thousand years ago. Imagine how much knowledge 
the consciousness of man has gathered. Man, the Bible said that we, 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 we didn't figure out how to do evil. The Bible, the Bible said that there's some men that they, 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 they sit about and they dream, they, they think of how to do evil. Their imagination is evil all the time. And I'm telling you, for you to have a consciousness like that, you get some information from somewhere. Look at our society. Look at how we have advanced, advanced over the, I mean, over the years. Now everything on the computer. Now, you know, you can click your hand, the lights will come on here. E everything, internet, everything, computer. Because the minds of men are advancing. More knowledge, more understanding. Amen. E everything is just going. The Bible said in the last day that knowledge will increase. It's happening. You know? And so my point is that when Adam and made up the tree, it broke fellowship with God. Man died. Pastor Bond, they died. Adam lived to be over 900 and some years old. So Adam didn't die immediately physically. But spiritually, he died right away. Because if you live to be 900 and some years old, somebody said, well, Pastor Bond, I thought he died. He did. He died spiritually. It's kind of like if you go break a limb off a tree, you throw it and it hit the ground, it'll stay alive for a few days, it's going to look green, but eventually it's going to die. Because it's no longer connected to the tree, to the vine, to the root. So even though Adam was living, he was disconnected. And, and think about it, look at our lives now, from that time to now. Men only living to be 80 to 100 and, 100 and some years old. Just a Methuselah, how long he lived. 900 some years. And then he died. Guess, imagine how many children you can produce in 400 years. In 100 years. Y'all see how the earth was, I see why the earth got populated so quick. Just imagine the lifespan of the people. You know what I can do in 400 years? Adam wife died and then he had another wife. He knew who she was. He had more children. These guys was multiplying and increasing. Amen. The, the population was increasing. Why? Because they was living nine, just a, I can't even imagine 900 years. It's hard to imagine. And then the church said they died and then they, they lived again. Okay. But my point today is this. And when they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees. Of the God. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice. I heard thy voice. I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? <laughs> Hast thou eating of the tree wherever I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Wow. So when Adam sinned, and it's the same thing that happens to us. When we make mistakes out here in this world, what the first thing we do? We get ashamed. We don't want to come to church. Oh, Lord, I did this all week long, Lord. I made this mistake, Lord. I got high. I, I cussed this week, Lord. And if you get ashamed and the enemy start talking to your head, you don't want to come to church. What, what's set in? Fear and shame. So when Adam sinned and disobeyed God, sin and shame came upon mankind. The Bible said he was afraid and he hid himself from the presence of God. 
And God asked him, said, Adam, who told you you was naked? So when Adam disobeyed God, his eyes was open and he spiritually died. And we're going to get ready to close. We're going to finish this up. But Adam was created to live in the presence of God. And basically what we're talking about today is the habitation of God, the dwelling place of God, the living place of God. And how many know that when Adam sinned, then God had to descend. God had to leave. Because of his sin. But we're going to get into some stuff later on that going to find out that in the New Testament that God sent the spirit of truth to bring man back in fellowship with him. But before, Adam didn't know good and evil. But in the garden, God talked to him. God fellowship with him. God came to see about him. Can I dare tell you God want to come see about you? God want to fellowship with you? God want to talk with you? God don't want you to just have a, 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 a religious experience. Y'all know what a religious experience is, don't you? You just come to church, you, the preacher preach, then you go home and you don't learn nothing, you don't have no fellowship with God, you just come to church just to be coming. It's a religious thing to do, it's traditional, it's a formality, it's just something you do every Sunday, but you never hear the voice of God. You never come into a place of relationship, and God is saying, I want the church to come into a place of fellowship with me through Christ Jesus. But today I just really wanted to point out that Adam's fellowship was broken through sin and unrighteousness. But Jesus came to restore and to mend that fellowship where God and Adam could walk together again. How many you know God want to walk with you? God want to guide you. Amen. God, I mean, God want to help you in your family. God want to help you in your marriage. God want to help you in every area of your life. But you got to allow the Holy Spirit and you got to allow God to lead you. You have to allow God. God's not going to come in and say, Pastor Larry, I want you and Maggie to do what I want you to do. And don't you do nothing else. No, you got to invite God into your marriage. You got to invite God into your home. You got to invite God into your life if God's going to participate. Because God's not going to come in and take over. He only comes when he's welcome. And if you welcome him in, then he'll come in and he'll lead you. He'll guide you into all truth. And now we're going to close on this, but I just want to read this since I told y'all to go there. Ephesians 2.22. I just want to read this. And then we're going we're gonna to prepare to go home. I'm actually going to start with verse 19 to read down to 22. It said, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostle and of the prophet. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone the head cornerstone, in yes. whom all the building fitly framed together, growing unto a holy temple in the Lord. Listen to this. And whom ye also are, builders together, for an habitation of God through the Spirit. What do this word habitation mean? It means a dwelling place. It means a house, a place of residence. How many know that we become a habitation? We become a dwelling place for God. God comes to live on the inside of us through the person of the Holy Spirit. So we, we become a habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. So the only way that God can live in us 
are the only way that we can become a, hab a habitation or a dwelling place of God is through the Spirit of God that's on the inside of us. Amen. Somebody say habitation. Habitation. So habitation means God resides. He takes residence on the inside of me. Isn't that interesting? And then you'll find out in St. John, he said, in St. John 14, he said this. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He said, and me and my Father will come. We'll manifest ourselves to you. Amen. Then he said, we'll come and we'll manifest ourselves to you. And he said, we'll live in you. Amen. And we'll dwell on the inside of you. Amen. So our body is supposed to be a habitation, a dwelling place of God. Yes. Yes. What's that scripture? Second Corinthians chapter, the first Corinthians chapter six. It said, "Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost?" That's right. Well, we're gonna close on this, but let me tell you something. It's a it's a revelation in it. It kind of blew my mind because most people think this, and I, now this may mess up your theology. But let me tell you, most people think this. When Jesus said, "I'm going home to prepare a place for you," they thought he was going to really build a house or a mansion. He was not going to be a, a resident in the earth like where I, I live. We, 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 we live on, on uh, Macbeth. My mom lives on Macbeth. That's where she lived. That's her house. That's her resident. Well, Jesus was not talking about a physical house. But when you look up the word temple in the original language, you know it's translated a mansion. And that's why the Bible, and God spoke to me last week and said it to me. He said, that's why when Jesus said, hey, he's going to give us a new, uh, th this old house. You know, tabernacle is going to be dissolved. But we're going to receive a house and a building from God that's eternal. Amen. Do y'all know that you're going to receive an eternal house? A physical house that's going to live forever? A house that, that, that's never going to die? This going to be your new mansion, this new body? Now, I know that messed up your religion. Because we, I used to think that too. Well, when well, Jesus got we going back to heaven, and we're going to live in a mansion. We ain't got to live in no shack on that. He was not talking about a physical house. Because the Bible said flesh and blood would not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't build no natural house in a spiritual kingdom. It don't work. <laughs> We're going to receive a, a new house, but it's a new body. Amen. And the Bible said we're going to be just like our house is going to be like his, eternal. Now, if you read your Bible, I'm going to give you a little glimpse of this because it blew my mind when I saw this. That new body Jesus had, y'all remember when he appeared to the twelve when they were sitting, they, they were sitting up, sit, sitting in the upper room, and they didn't believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. And the Bible said he walked through the door. And then when you study your Bible, you read all back in the book of Acts, where, where the Bible said that many times when the disciples were walking up and down the street, amen, Jesus was walking right beside them. And then the Bible said when he spoke, their eyes opened up and they knew it was him. Jesus knew about it, was able to Man, function in the earth and in the heavens. It was like the angels. You know, like the angels can come and stand in, in the middle of us and they can take on the, the Bible said, be careful who you entertain because sometimes you entertain angels by unaware. You don't even know that it's an angel. I remember one time I almost drowned in a, in a, in a river. And a white man reached over and grabbed me and pulled me out of, the, out of a suck hole. And when I looked up, he was gone. And I asked him, I said, who saw? Did y'all see that white man that pulled me out of the water? They said, we didn't see nobody pull you out. All we know is that when you, because when he pulled me, I was able to, he let me go, and I was able to get back on top of the water, come out the suck hole. That, and I knew it was the angel of the Lord, because he, he just picked me up and sent me over. And I saw him through the water, and then he disappeared. And the Bible said that, that our body shall be like Christ. It's going to be like his and it's going to be like the angel. It's going to be eternal. So we got a new mansion, 